Francis, so What's good up? to see your face again. It's been like too long. I know. Since uh, the Apple Store, I think. Since the Apple Store when we did the CQ&A. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so good to see you. I loved talking with Nina. I'm so excited to chat with you about this film. You know, I'm the biggest Hunger Games I fan. I know, I know. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Easily one of my favorite films of the year. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Great. I, I honestly can't wait for fans to see it, and I'll be seeing it again, of course. Awesome. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to ask you about the iconic line, it's the things we love most that destroy us. And we finally understand the meaning of that line for President Snow in this film when we see, you know, young Coriolanus's backstory, which I thought Tom did a fantastic job. But talk about the importance of that line and how it kind of comes full circle in this film. Yeah, so, I mean, so it ended up, it, there's, it's a it's kind of a funny story. It was not in the script and it was not intended, and it actually is sort of back-engineered. So marketing put together a sizzle reel while we were still shooting that we were showing the sort of international distribution partners, and they used that line at the, as like the button at the end. And it really resonated with me, and it stuck and stuck and stuck, and it remained in this sort of teaser trailer, and it became this common thread. And when I got to the end of the movie and we were working on it, I thought, you know what, we should have it at the end of the movie because there's just something so thematically tied into how this kind of failed love affair with Lucy Gray created the man we now know as Snow and mm -hmm. how you hear Donald's voice when you see sort of young Tom Blythe now as kind of the fully formed Snow. It just made it feel like it all fit thematically. You understood who Tom was going to become and why he became that person, and it made um, it just made an impact on me. And so I, I wanted to use it at the end of the movie. But I am going to give credit to the marketing department because it was their <laughs> idea first. <laughs> I I love that story, and yes, I mean like that is an iconic Hunger Games line, and I love how it played out here. Yeah. Um, I one of my favorite scenes in the film the scene for me where I just had goosebumps is in the battle arena and she's singing her ballad and the snakes are surrounding her. Can you tell me a cool behind the scenes story about that? And how many times did Rachel have to live sing on set for the ballads? Um, well, she, she always sang live. So every time she sings in the movie, she sings live. The only time that we had to limit the amount of singing she did was when she sings that song with the snakes. And it's because it, the climax of that song hits um, in such an intense way that it was actually could be damaging to her to her voice and her vocal cords, and it was the only time that we really strained her voice. Um, so we had to limit that at least the sort of climax of it. What I will say, story wise, about it that was interesting is we had to start shooting with the games, and so that was the first time she sang on set for anybody. She hadn't sung on set yet. We knew, you know, we had the songs written, we had heard her sing all of the songs, but just not on set. And we knew that the musical side of the movie was special, was unique, but was also one of the big swings of the movie. And so here's a moment in the games, she's gonna start singing. And, but I think it gave everybody chills. There were some people that were crying on set um, and she just did a phenomenal job and you know, I, it's a very different experience. Obviously, those snakes are CG, but you can ima you know, imagine what it's going to look like, and her performance is so good, and her voice is incredible. And everybody was silent, and we were shooting in a real arena in Poland, and the acoustics, the acoustics in there are incredible. So you can imagine it's her by herself with a crew dead silent and singing this powerful, powerful song. Um, it was a pretty, pretty great moment. I will also say that when the dailies made it back to L.A., we heard stories about the creative execs were down there and they saw it and they had tears in their eyes and they had to call like the next level up and they came down and they had tears in their eyes and then they called so like t till the chairman of Lionsgate had like was like yanked down to the theater for that day's dailies to see her you know belting out this song. Oh, it's so iconic and I cannot wait for fans to see it. Well, Francis, they are wrapping me. I could chat with you all day about anything Hunger Games, but I want to see a Tiger spinoff. I that want would be her great. own spinoff film. I thought Hunter was fantastic, so I just had to add that. Yeah, thank you. I wish I actually wish there was more Hunter in it. I, I think Hunter's the best. One of my favorite yes. people on the planet. 
I loved seeing Tigress's backstory a little bit too as a fan. So Francis, again, congratulations to you. And like I said, I cannot wait for fans to see this film. I think they're going to absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Good talking to you. Hope I see you soon. Yes, hope to see you soon. Bye, Francis. Bye. Bye. BCFilmGirl.com. Nina, so nice to meet you. I'm a huge Hunger Games fan. I love get so it. Many com- yes, I get so many compliments on my Mockingjay tat- tattoo. I've had I've shown this to um, Amanda, Elizabeth, Francis. So happy to show it to you that, as well. It's an excellent tattoo. Also, a very good wall there you got behind you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I absolutely loved this film. I thought it delivered on every single level from storytelling, filmmaking, so much like the novel adaptation. And you've produced so many iconic and beloved films, but what is the most special thing about having produced all of the Hunger Games films? Well, I have to say that, the, you know, I mean, besides these books, which I love myself as a fan, the fans of these books, like, they really move me and these movies. Like, they remind me about the power of storytelling, how much we want to connect, see ourselves and each other in the stories that we love, how much a community can form around the love of a story. I love generationally seeing <clears throat> this generation, like, book talk and ex- the explosion of, like, just a real emotional, authentic love for the stories that, that, that move us. And so to get to be a part of a story like this, that means so much to me, and then also means so much to so many other people. And to get to sort of share that experience with them and try to uh, live up to their expectations, but also to try to open the door and bring in new people and give them access to these stories so that even if you've never seen any of these movies, read any of these books, that you might plop down in the theater and be captivated by this story was something that, you know, um, I hope will happen for people. But I think, you know, I've been incredibly moved by our fan base and their, and what these stories mean to them and how they inspire them and, and you know, and, 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 and how they in turn inspire me. I love that. I mean, Lucy Gray is going to be my personality over the next couple of months. I absolutely loved her. So the fans are definitely going to be very excited when they watch this. You've obviously had so much time to reflect. I mean, Mockingjay Part 2 came out like eight years ago. And I'm curious, I know it's a, it's a hard question, but is there a particular scene as a producer that impacted you the most? And maybe not a favorite scene, but while you were on set, like that scene in all of the Hunger Games universe that particularly impacted you the most as a producer? Well, God, I don't know if I could pick one scene. I mean, I have to say that, you know, what has been so rare about these has been, it's really about the people and it's about, you know, this partnership with Francis and Suzanne. But, you know, Um, We just this week did the, like, you know, filmmakers commentary together. And Francis, honestly, is the only director I've ever known who's like, will you do this commentary with me? You know, I'd rather do it with you than alone. And so just have that partnership and these moments. And there are so many moments that I can think of where we sort of, like, you know, noodled around with something a bit and then finally felt like, oh, we got it. You know, we found it. We, We, you know... And there were, I have to say, on this movie, one of my favorite moments actually was, I, the, on this movie, because I've been in touch with some of our diehard fans, and we were in Europe, we had, like, some of our fans as uh, featured extras in, when we were shooting in, Germ- in, in, in Germany. Um, and so, uh, incredible, you know, to, to sort of have this full circle experience of getting to meet some of the fans and then also have them participate in the franchise. And so both in the control room um, and in District 12, there are some of like the loyal fans, people who I have like, no, like we've, you know, been on Twitter or whatever over the years, but then to actually have them become part of the franchise that they have helped to carry as fans all these years, that was really emotional for me. <laughs> 
I, I love that. I, I love how you love the fandom and Nina, they are wrapping me. I would chat with you for the rest of the evening, but I cannot wait to see the screening of uh, this film again in theaters with fans. And I have to say, I love the moment in the battle arena with Lucy Gray singing the ballad. It just gave me complete chills. I, I can't wait for fans to see that moment. Nina, again, Same congratulations here. That, to you. that destroyed me. <laughs> oh, it, de it destroyed me. It destroyed me. Nina, congratulations. Thank, you. Thank you. you so much. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.